It's been eight years since Kerbal Space Program was released. Hell, it was one of the very few space games out in the market back then and it had some surprisingly accurate physics to it. Well, guess what? They just announced Kerbal Space Program 2 as a 2020 release. The game that no one asked for, yet the game that everyone wanted deep in their hearts unknowingly. The only game in 2020 I was looking forward to was Cyberpunk. Everything else that has been announced for 2020 had the slimy hands of AAA industry on it. But Kerbal Space Program 2 changes that. We, or at least I, now am experiencing an unhealthy amount of hype even more so than I got from Cyberpunk for this game. <laughs> now then, KSP2. Well, it certainly has some massive expectations to live up to. Kerbals now have a culturally wide recognition. So much so that people that haven't even played Kerbal Space Program ever recognize Kerbals and the corny scientific memes that's been circulating around the internet. And secondly, more and more space games are popping up nowadays, so they even have competition now. Even Warframe is making its own version, look at that. Now the original title captured the attentions of every age group by the hardcore focus on realistic physics, yet somehow making that actually fun. Hell, they even added some trademark humor to it. Looking at you, Jebediah. Launching Space Frogs since 2011. <laughs> Kerbal Space 2, as it seems, wants to expand upon the original significantly with deep space exploration, already inbuilt interstellar travel and whatnot. Oh, Scott Manley, why did you get me addicted to this game? <laughs> and moreover, next generation technology usage. Yes, this is a cinematic trailer, but what it seems from a few screenshots, the graphics will definitely be improved upon. They went as far as to suggest interplanetary colonization. Now the game already has some significant development time under its belt and I am honestly quite surprised there were no leaks whatsoever prior to this release trailer and the trailer just took everyone by surprise. I was all aboard that hype train. Now, it's worthy of mentioning that the game isn't being developed by Squad, the original devs, rather it's being developed by Star Theory. A completely different studio than the original. These are the devs that worked on Planetary Annihilation, so I haven't lost all hope. That was a great game. Although Squad does seem to have some involvement in the development and are assisting Star Theory while continuing to work on the original game. Now this begs the question, what should we play? KSP1? <laughs> Kinda seems odd to say that right now. Or KSP2? Well, I think it will all depend on how much KSP2 can retain what made KSP an honest-to-god, one-of-kind great game. Personally, if Kerbal Space Program 2 lives up to be the worthy sequel it promises, I will definitely be switching or else I will keep playing Kerbal Space Program 1 and add more Kerbals to my killed in action pile. <laughs> KSP2 seems like it will certainly retain some scientific accuracy and it seems it is in good hands, but I'll still retain a bit of skepticism because I don't want to have a 0.6% chance of unlocking the Thumper Solid Fuel Booster through loot boxes, and I certainly will be boycotting the game if it ever has the slightest resemblance of a microtransaction inside it. But I digress, I still have hope that because the devs have a good background in aerospace industry and are actually consulting scientists. Specifically Dr. Joel Green of James Webb Space Telescope. Moreover, a bald Scottish guy has threatened the devs and they have pinned the comment in fear. So I think we won't be treading corrupted money grab watchers. When the game launches next year, it will be available on PC via Steam and hopefully they won't be taking any slimy epic money. Xbox and PlayStation 4 version will arrive a bit later from the PC version allowing the devs to make KSP a truly PC title rather than a console port, which we all know how it turns out in 90% of the cases. So the trailer for the game, which you can see running in the background right now, is absolutely stunning. The renders are super crisp, I gotta say, albeit it's a cinematic trailer, but it clearly shows hints of original KSP parts in addition to a large number of new parts being in the game. Moreover, planetary rings, look at that, space colonization, and of course, beautiful destruction. Because let's be honest, apart from a selected few Megamines, we casuals love blowing the rockets up more than actually making a landing on a Duna. <laughs> 
Unfortunately, there are no gameplay shown in the trailer. I was kind of disappointed about that, but I didn't even expect this game to come up, so eh. But then the assets in it certainly do look like they are from the actual game, so that's some consolidations. The colonization is perhaps one of the key areas which will be different from the original gameplay-wise, while KSP1 focused on technologies mostly already available to humanity right now in the modern age. But the sequel seems to be trading in the near future with interstellar travel and technologies that will allow you to go far deeper into the space. So I naturally would assume that there will be way more of the universe in the game than just the Kerbal variant of the solar system and would feel like much more of an open world than it already was. They also have suggested co-op multiplayer. Can you just imagine that? My friend surely will be looking at the dawn and see 20 Saturn V's aim straight at his colony. <laughs> In fact, colonization onto stellar parties will certainly have resource gathering aspect and researching aspects, right? Right? Or am I just reading too much into this because I actually want all of those. I am overhyped right now. The idea of building colonies or different planets and then starting to launch stuff from the planets instead of just carbon and launching them ever deeper into the space like you build colonies, you launch and you rinse and repeat that in the space is downright unhealthy levels of excitement to me. This would also suggest that ships will be able to travel significantly faster than it was possible in stock KSP. Hell, they have even shown a nuclear bomb propelled engine in the trailer. Do I need to say any more? Or maybe the technology will just be the same and young Jebediah will have three grandkids by the time he reaches the Kerbal equivalent of Pluto. So, who knows? Anything's possible. Speaking of Kerbal equivalents, I do want the planets this time around to be real life size, but maybe that will just make the game too tedious. I'll leave that thinking to the devs. This should allow the players to be much more balls to the walls with their rockets and reaching Jules with only one orange tank won't be a thing only Scott Manley can do. The trailer also showcases some truly amazing details, dusty moon surface, ringed planets, proper gas giants. I would go far as to say that looks better than what Elite Dangerous has right now and I would like to believe that it's not just a cinematic trailer but actual gameplay. I'm ready to spend a thousand dollar on GPU for this devs. Do it! Just do it! <laughs> and with regards to modding, apparently the new architecture of the game will allow even more extensive modding capabilities. Oh boy, oh. I can already see the learning curve growing exponentially for me. <laughs> So yeah, that's all there was to summarize about the trailer and announcement of KSP2 apart from the Reddit post that just said KSP2, holy shit, and managed to farm more karma and medals than my entire Reddit career. And the links to the trailer, developer story video, which I honest to god highly recommend you guys watch because it, it brought tear to my eyes for some reason. And the Reddit post, damn Reddit post in the description. <laughs> So yeah guys, that's all for today and hope you all are aboard that case we do hype train because I surely am and until next time, hype safe as Scott Manley would say. <laughs>